New England is a leaf peeper's paradise. In New England, we're renowned for our sugar maples, and those trees can be really, really bright in the fall, and that's why people come from all over the world to see it. Jim Salji knows. He tracks trees professionally as Yankee Magazine's fall foliage forecaster. Every fall, I put together a list of all the conditions in the past year that impact the fall foliage across the Northeast. One of his recommendations for a foliage feast for the eyes is right in the heart of the city, measuring just under two dozen acres, the Boston Public Garden. The center of Boston is one of the last places to turn in the fall. After all the mountains and surrounding small towns have turned, that's really because of the elevation, the proximity to the coast, and the heat island. Heat islands are urban areas that hold on to warmth longer because of their infrastructure, such as buildings and roads. It stays warmer at night, and we really need cold temperatures at night to kickstart the colors. The nation's first public botanical garden also boasts 400 plus trees that represent 159 unique species. This is a black gum or black tupelo. It's one of the oldest living trees. It can grow to five, 600 years old in New England and turns a brilliant bright red every fall. Brevity aside, the tops of New England's trees, some of the most beautiful, if not the most in the country. The Mountain West has uh, beautiful aspens, uh, down the Appalachians there's uh, some really nice color, but I think here in New England we have some of the best and brightest color. Paul Dever is a professional pumpkin carver. I used to watch the Food Network shows and there was really only a couple of guys at the time doing it. So I was like, let me, let me take a shot at it at least. And first one was terrible, like everybody else's, and then they got better and better. Dever practiced for about five years before he felt comfortable showing off his craft. I posted a picture online and somebody grabbed it and then somebody hired me to do a show and then it's just every year it's been a whirlwind. That whirlwind included a chance to compete on the show that inspired him to take up this craft. One day I got an email from a producer at Food Network that said they were looking for cast members. They were bringing back Outrageous Pumpkins. He made it on the show and won. It's probably one of the best experiences I've had when it comes to pumpkin carving by far. Now, armed with a title. This is one of the ribbon loops I was talking about. This is pretty much my favorite shape. Tools. Once I have the skin all peeled off, I'll run a line across the top here, which is basically your brow line, where your eyes sit below. And technique. Dever and some other gourd gougers launched a YouTube show called Carvers and Creators. We're all trying to do the same thing. We're all trying to carve the same exact thing, and we don't know what it is. We spin the wheel. You get your subject, you pick it, you got five minutes to get your tools, an hour and a half to get pretty much done. Dever still works his day job as a mechanical coordinator for a construction company, but loves tapping into his creative side at home. I've always been able to draw a little bit, and I like to sculpt. Halloween's my favorite holiday. It just seemed like the natural thing to do. Sometimes you look at a pumpkin, you say, oh, I can see the face already. I know what it is. Pumpkins predestined to meet their face. Just the sound of the scraping gets you in the zone. You forget how long you've been doing it. Sometimes I'll look down and it'll be three hours from the last time I looked at my watch. I'm just really lucky to be able to travel, meet other carvers and share you know, tips and tricks. And I feel really lucky to have a supportive wife and family around me that encourage me to do this. It's incredible. All right, so if you're interested in some leaf peeping, why not? There's an urban peeping guide that maps out foliage for you. And for more information, check out our website. Coming up, ghost stories from Boston and beyond.